Good morning. The community of St. Francis Xavier gathers to celebrate the Eucharist on this third Sunday of Easter. The music for our liturgy can be found in the parish bulletins, which are at the doorways. We want to extend a warm welcome to our baptism family, any visitors or any new parishioners who are with us today. We also welcome those who are joining us via live stream this morning. Let us rise and greet one another this Sunday morning. of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. My sisters and brothers, the disciples were awestruck when Jesus stood in their midst. As we gather in God's presence, let us recall our need for God and ask for God's forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you reveal yourself to us in word and sacrament. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you invite us to be nourished at your table. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you call us to follow you so that we may have life. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. May your people exult forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to the people, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant, Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence when he had decided to release him. You denied the holy and righteous one and asked that a murderer be released to you. The author of life you put to death, but God raised him from the dead. Of this we are witnesses. Now I know, brothers, that you acted out of ignorance, just as your leaders did. But God has thus brought to fulfillment what he had announced beforehand through the mouth of all the prophets that his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be wiped away. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. John. My children, I am writing this to you so that you may not commit sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. He is expiation for our sins. 
and not for our sins only, but for those of the whole world. The way we may be sure that we know him is to keep his commandments. Those who say, I know him, but do not keep his commandments are liars, and the truth is not in them. But whoever keeps his word, the love of God is truly perfected in him. The word of the Lord. Be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The two disciples recounted what had taken place on the way and how Jesus was made known to them in the breaking of bread. While they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you can see I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed, he asked them, have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Throughout Easter, our first reading, instead of being from the Old Testament, is from the Acts of the Apostles. And this is very fitting because in a time when we are trying to figure out what it means to live out our faith in this time of the resurrection, we hear about the first Christian community, about the apostles and disciples of Jesus, figuring out what it means to live out their own faith after the resurrection and ascension of Jesus. And the first part of the Acts of the Apostles, it focuses on Peter as the main focal point. And this is truly beautiful because we can see just how far Peter has come. 
I've mentioned this in different Masses, and especially lately during the daily Masses as we recount the Acts of the Apostles, but Peter truly is one of my favorite people throughout the Scriptures because we see how far he comes. The Gospels tell us of the time when he became the leader of the Apostles, when he declared in front of everyone that Jesus was the Christ, the Messiah, the Son of God. But the Gospels also tell of his many mistakes and the multiple times when he sticks his foot in his mouth. We learn about both of these sides of Peter. And in the Acts of the Apostles, we see Peter truly become the person that Jesus knew he could be, the rock on which he would build his church. Today's reading is a continuation of a story in which Peter actually heals a man who had been crippled, who is sitting in the temple area. Peter comes up to him and heals him in the name of Jesus. And people are amazed. And he tells the people, do not be amazed, because it is not by my own power that I've healed this man, but it is through the power of Jesus. It is the name of Jesus in which I heal. And then he goes into a further speech. In today's reading, our first reading is a continuation of that speech. And what we hear today, Jesus talks about how the people denied Jesus. And this wording stood out to me. He says twice, you denied Jesus. Of all people, of all the people who point the finger and say, you denied Jesus, Peter is telling this to the crowd. Now, whenever we get fixated on words in Scripture, especially particular words, it is important for us to remember not a single word of Scripture was written in English. It is important for us to remember that when we get fixated on the words. And so as I began to get fixated on this word, to deny, I wanted to try to look it up. Is it the same word that is used to describe Peter's actions? The original word used here in Greek is arneomai, to deny. And it is, in fact, the exact same Greek word that Peter uses here that is used also to describe what Peter did. Each of the Gospels use the same word to deny in Greek that Peter decides to use in front of all of the people. So this is very purposeful, that Peter is, in fact, pointing the finger and using this exact same word. And we could call Peter a hypocrite because he is chastising people for doing the exact same thing that he did. We could consider him a hypocrite if it weren't for everything that happened after the resurrection of Jesus, for Peter's own actions after that point. Peter shows us what it means to truly accept the love and mercy of God, especially when we find ourselves in a state of sin and shame. Peter could have remained in his shame. One of the most striking parts for me of the, the narrative around the crucifixion is when Peter does deny Jesus for the third time and the cock crows, he's reminded that he was warned that he would do that exact thing. And it says that he wept bitterly filled with his shame and regret and guilt. He wept bitterly at that point in time, and he could have remained in that state to cower away, to never speak up again, to think of himself as never worthy of being a follower of Jesus again. And sometimes we too are held captive. We are held captive by shame and guilt and fear thinking ourselves as unworthy because of our past actions. Now, shame and guilt have their place. They help to point out to us when we have made a mistake. They stop us in our tracks so that we might stop and make amends, to change course. And that acknowledgement, that's a good thing. It's something that can help us from going any further. And that can lead us back to Jesus. But that is the moment 
when we must leave the shame and the guilt behind. When Jesus appears to the disciples in today's gospel, they are afraid. Why? Well, it says that they think at first that he is a ghost. After all, they know for a fact that Jesus died and he was placed in a tomb. And now he is right in front of them. But in a way, this response is a bit strange because they have already heard from others that Jesus had risen. In fact, that's exactly how this gospel begins. The two disciples who were on the road to Emmaus, who saw Jesus on the road and recognized him in the breaking of bread, they were telling their story. They were just telling the disciples that they had seen Jesus when he appeared before them. I think there's something else to consider here. Most of the people in that room had abandoned Jesus in his darkest hour. Peter himself stood there in that room the last time he saw Jesus. He denied that he even knew who he was. They may not be afraid of Jesus because they think he's a ghost. They might simply be afraid of Jesus. They might be afraid of what he will say next, of his disappointment, his anger. What kind of punishment might they face for denying Jesus, who they know to be the Messiah? But Jesus has no words of reprimand or punishment or shame. Peace be with you. Those are his first words to them. Peace be with you. He begins by trying to alleviate their fears. And then he addresses their fears directly. Why are you troubled? Why do you have questions in your heart? And then he shows them his hands and his feet to alleviate their fears, to show that he's flesh and blood. And there's this small detail in this reading in particular that he asks for a fish, and it says he eats it directly in front of them. It's a bit of a strange detail, but Jesus continues to do these actions to show to them that he is alive. He is flesh and blood. Jesus does not want them to live in shame and guilt and fear. And Peter in particular will have his own moment with Jesus, a moment of healing. In the Gospel of John, there is another resurrection story where Jesus appears by the seashore and he asks Peter three times, do you love me? Our second reading begins by saying, I'm writing this to you so that you may not commit sin. And then it immediately says, but if anyone does sin, The person who wrote this knows human nature well. So you shouldn't sin, but just in case, just in case you do, because we will make mistakes. We will make mistakes. And that's not to say that we should just give up then. No, we don't, because we do have an advocate. The very person that we might think that we should fear in those moments of shame and guilt, no, that is the very person who also greets us in peace, the person who is our advocate at all times, including the times of our greatest mistakes. Jesus does not want us to live in fear and shame and guilt. And so we admit our sins and our faults, our mistakes, and then we lay them down and put them away along with our shame and our guilt, so that we might fully live and be the people that we are called to be. The Peter that we hear about in this first reading has been released from his mistakes, his fear and his doubt. And that allows him to help others to do the same. May we follow in his example.
Let us stand together and as a community profess our faith. I believe in one God. The presence of Jesus filled the disciples with joy. Knowing that Jesus is in our midst, let us confidently offer our prayers to God in union with the risen Lord. For the church, that the Spirit will open our minds to understand the scriptures and empower us to share the message of God's love and forgiveness with all whom we encounter. Let us pray to the Lord. for the the grace of recognition that we may come to know Jesus in the breaking of the bread and the sharing of the scriptures so that we may be dynamic disciples. Let us pray to the Lord. For a greater stewardship of God's creation, that God will guide us in wisely using and protecting Earth's resources for the good of all the human family and for future generations. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who are broken and wounded, that they may find healing in Christ and that our awareness of the wounds of Christ may help us grow in our understanding and compassion for them. Let us pray to the Lord. For the members of Congress, that God will give them wisdom and guide their deliberations so that the best approaches may be found to act upon the critical issues confronting our nation. Let us pray to the Lord. For protection of healthcare workers in areas of warfare and violence that God will protect and sustain all who care for the sick or seek to assist the wounded toward recovery and well-being. Let us pray to the Lord. For peace, that God will protect the human family from all forms of violence, mass shootings, weapons of mass destruction, and chemical spills. Let us pray to the Lord. God of life, sustain us with your love so that we may be your disciples. Hear our prayers, and in your love, assist us. We ask this in the name of Jesus, the risen Lord. Amen.
Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers and the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory, as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you 
so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed of Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Ignatius of Loyola, St. Francis Xavier, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Mitchell, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we pray in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but to the us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called the Supper of the Lamb. Lord.
Let us pray. <clears throat> Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those who were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Good morning. My name is Katie Jansen. I'm the director of the work for College Church. It's great to see everyone this morning. I especially want to welcome the parents and families of SLU students who are here this weekend and anyone who's visiting or who is here for the first time. We're so glad that you joined us. The Circle of Creation Committee invites all to view and discuss an excerpt from the documentary film, Seeding Change, The Power of Conscious Commerce after this Mass. Join us as we gather to discuss and pray how we as a parish community and as individuals can respond to the critical call of caring for God's creation through voting with our dollars. Sister Cheryl Kemner, coordinator of Franciscans for the Earth, will lead the discussion. Rock and Roll Bingo is two weeks away on Saturday, April 27th. This is a family-friendly event Kids 10 and up will enjoy playing bingo, and we will have babysitting available for younger children. And there is incentive to buy your tickets today. If we sell 100 tickets between now and Friday, Father Tucker has agreed to dress up as Elvis. I really want that to happen. So we have flyers in the back of church that people will be passing out, or they will be downstairs at Donut Sunday. This is Donut Sunday. Um, so you can sign up before you leave here today if you want to come. And please come down and enjoy a donut, especially if you're visiting this weekend. We'd love the chance to get to know you. 
The College Church Pastoral Council is looking for four new members for the term beginning in August of 2024. If you or someone you know is interested, you can fill out the interest form by going to our website. You have one more week to sign up to host a community party. As a host, you choose a party theme, date, and location, and the cost to attend. Your party can be elaborate or simple. It's a great opportunity to build community and to support the parish. To learn more and to sign up to host, please go to our website. Uh, finally, if I could invite council members and uh, ministry leaders to please join me in the back after the final blessing so that we can greet people as they leave. Thank you. The Lord be with you. Bow down for God's blessing. May God, who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son, was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. May he whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. May you who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith by living a right manner on this earth be united with him in the homeland of heaven. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life.